Okay, let's get real guys. I had a big fat F in intermediate mechanics. It felt like every sleepless night and all of those times I worked so hard and all of the time I put into my education and my career crafting the right path was all futile. My hopes disappeared into thin air and I thought this F would follow me forever. That I wouldn't get a job because of it. That I wouldn't get into grad school because of it. I literally thought that no one would ever take me seriously again. Sometimes failure feels like it automatically cancels out every good thing that you've ever done in your life. And trust me when I tell you that that is a momentary feeling. Hey guys, I'm Priya for those of you who may not know me. Welcome to my channel. I'm here to tell you all things college. Check out my intro video if you don't know me and definitely hit the subscribe button because I'm very new to YouTube and I want to teach you guys everything I learned throughout the grueling experience that people call college. And if you don't know me, I loved college, like I loved it, but this video is gonna go into what I learned from failing in college. Just a quick interjection, this video isn't just for, you know, people in high school or people in college. It could be for anyone who has ever felt like they failed something ever because I know all of us have had that happen at some point or the other. And I really hope that my story and everything I learned from my story can help you. So this video is organized into two parts. The first part is about that entire toxic feeling, that cycle of failure, and I try to organize it. Like, I know failure is so messy, but I try to organize it, and I call it my diagram of the downward spiral. So that is the first part of the video. The second part of the video is the three tips I have to actually overcome that failure and go back to that curious, fulfilled, and happy person that you are. So join me for this journey and I'm gonna completely expose myself and talk about when I failed. So a little background, I was an astrophysics major in college and I just graduated last year. And being one of the few women in physics at the University of Chicago, imposter syndrome was a real thing. I never felt like I did good enough and I was almost satisfied with those mediocre grades because I thought that that's all I could do, that that was the best I could do, honestly. And my first two years in college, I didn't do great. Like I had a probably like a B or B minus average, but then I failed and then I learned from it. And my last two years in college, I had a 3.8 GPA, like average. And I took grad physics classes and still managed to get A's. So trust me when I tell you that failure, honestly, I won't say it's the best thing that's ever gonna happen to you, but it pushed me in the right path. But let's go back to where it all started. The first part of the diagram of the downward spiral is being extremely average. This is where failure starts. When you're average, you expect nothing more of yourself. You stay in that lane of being average because when you're doing great, it is motivating. You are pumped. You want to keep doing great. When you're doing horrible, you're motivated to get better, you know? But when you're average, there's like a lack of depth in your motivation and what you care about. You're okay with being average. That is nothing that anyone should be striving for. So when you are in that place of being average, you know that there's something missing that you're not working hard enough for some reason whatever that reason may be you have to admit that you are average like if you can say you are it's for a reason there's something stopping you from pushing through that barrier and getting to that place where you're extremely like you know happy with yourself and doing the best you can so that's the first part of the spiral and that's exactly where i was that averageness though then leads you into complacency complacency is when you are okay with being average and that is the scariest part because no one should be okay with being average always strive to do better when you are complacent you don't strive to do more you don't think about how you can do more and you're almost giving up you're okay with not doing more being in that stagnant space and when you're complacent that stagnancy just gets worse and worse because wherever you are you stay that way and if you do a little worse and a little worse and a little worse that's your new normal Especially when you're complacent, you have no motivation to do better. If you slowly keep inching towards doing worse, that is your new normal and that's where you stand. So going back to my story, I was, you know, getting Bs, B minuses, some C pluses, some Cs. I also had some A's, but in my physics classes, I was extremely average, like probably below average in the bell curve sometimes. And I just thought that that's all I could do. And that's where I was, you know, that that was my place because everyone 
is part of that normal distribution of the bell curve and I thought that that was my place in that normal distribution. It was not, okay? It was not, but I thought that. And I kept slowly inching towards being worse and worse, like a B minus would fall to a C plus. And it just kept going on like that for my first year and a half. My first year was fine and then it just kept slowly getting worse. And I didn't really change anything. And that's when you fall into failure. That is the last part of that downward spiral. That's when it really hits you. You see that F and for some of you, that might be the trigger and failure doesn't have to be an F in your class. It doesn't have to be something specific. It is just that feeling of despair where you know it can't get worse, where it feels like everything has been taken away from you and that all of your hard work meant nothing. That is when you start backtracking and you try to think about what even led you to that point, what led you there, and how you can slowly get back up. That was the linchpin for me. And this could happen for many reasons. People have a lot of different reasons for letting yourself be average, fall into complacency, keep getting worse and worse, and then ultimately end up in some sort of failure, whether that's a grade or whether that's something in your personal life. It happens to everyone. I don't know anyone who felt like they didn't fail at something. So once you get there, that can be one of the most powerful moments of your life because that's when you sit down and you think about how to get out. That's something that you probably didn't think of throughout that whole downward spiral. Now you're forced to. So let's move on to the second part of the video, which is a bit more motivating, where I tell you the three tips that really helped me. The first one, acknowledge the importance of mental health. I talk about this in the things I wish I knew before I started college because this is one of the biggest things I wish I knew. When you're in high school and you're really trying to get into college, you're just stressed out all the time or wherever you are in your life. It is a lot of stress and in this day and age, everything has become a competition. So that stress is almost normalized. People think that that's okay. People think sleeping less than eight hours a day, stressing out at night, staying up all night, studying, all of that has been normalized, but that isn't normal, that's unhealthy. So you have to keep your mental health in check. Your brain is just as important, if not more important than the rest of your physical body. And if you're exerting yourself mentally, you will not be happy. And if you're not happy, you will not accept yourself and you will never get to the point of doing the best you can. So acknowledge mental health, find out what works for you. For some people, it might be therapy. For others, it might just be going on runs. For others, it could be meditating or cooking, whatever works for you. Figure it out and incorporate it into your life so that it becomes a habit. The second, brainstorm your motivation for doing better. Sit down and write out the reasons you wanna do better, where it's gonna lead you. Because when you're sitting down thinking about how average you are, there has to be a motivation for you to want to do better. It could be to get a job that pays you really well. It could be to get out of financial debt. It could be to provide for your family. Whatever it is, find out that motivation and use that to hold yourself accountable. You can't hold yourself accountable if you don't know what you're doing it for. So brainstorming that is really important. That could happen in so many ways. You just write it out in a journal, write it down in a piece of paper, whatever works for you. Spend some time and really think about why you want to do better. And the third tip and the last one that I have for you guys is to create actionable items to keep yourself in check. And this is probably one of the hardest things to do because it's really easy to try to organize your life and write everything down and you know, know what is gonna help you but never actually do it. Actions really do speak louder than words. Here I am throwing out all of these cliches, but trust me, it worked for me. And it's very easy to know what the right thing to do is for you, but to actually do it is a completely different story. Take me for example, I love running and I know that it really helps me because you just de-stress, like that's how I de-stress. And I know it helps, so I try to do it as often as I can, but then days go by where I don't go on a run at all. I feel very lazy, I feel dull. I start slowly losing that motivation and have to push myself to remember to go on that run. Like these are actionable items that you know will help you, but for some reason, for some reason, the way our brain works, we don't do the things that we know are gonna help us, which is really ironic, but that happens. So holding yourself accountable, finding your motivation, acknowledging that you need to take care of your mental health, all of that like plays a role in how you end up dealing with failure and 
dealing with things that feel like a failure and then moving past it, learning from it and becoming even better because of it. So that's all I have for today, guys. Let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed this video or if there was a time that you failed and if you learned a lot from it because I know I did. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Smash that like button for that YouTube algorithm. And I will see you guys at the next video.